Welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Indiana Students, sponsored by the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A buttons uh, on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at inacac.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, same website inacac.org or inacac.org. And all of the other um, workshops that have been given in the last couple of weeks will be there as well. I would now like to turn it over to our presenter. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Angela Williams, and I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Recruitment here at the School of Informatics and Computing um, at IUPUI. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. <clears throat> and we will get started. Perfect. All right. So um, we are an IU University degree, so Indiana University on IUPUI's campus. Um, the great thing about IUPUI is that you have Purdue and IU degrees that come out of um, IUPUI. Um, so the School of Informatics and Computing is an Indiana University degree. Um, I'm going to mostly talk about our degrees and not as much about IUPUI as you can see those sessions elsewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just move forward from the Indiana University, Purdue University slides. We are located right in downtown Indianapolis in the heart of the city. Um, I always mention, you know, we have um, many hospitals surrounding us. We have the Indiana University Medical School and big tech companies like um, Genesis and Allegion and Eli Lilly and Cummins and Salesforce. So there's a lot of opportunity for tech jobs and internships while you're in school. You can see here about 87% of our graduates are employed at about $54,000 starting median salary. <clears throat> um, and we have about 97 companies who are, we're partnered with who are hiring our students full-time and intern positions. So we offer five undergraduate Bachelor of Science degrees. We're working on a six in the final stages, which will be artificial intelligence. Um, one thing you'll find is that all of our degrees um, focus on technology, whether it's in biology, healthcare, um, the creative industry, data, or code. So I'm gonna break each one of these majors down with you today, but first I'm gonna show you a video. And actually, did I share that? I'm gonna stop, share, and do it again to make sure that I did the right thing with sound. <clears throat> All right, there we go. I'm going to show you a video that just gives a brief overview of all of our majors in one demo reel. way to connect people and information. It was XML, it was HTML. Oh, I think it's connections. Informatics is the future. The future of computing. It is technology, it is media, it is everything that you see on the internet, it's everything that's pervasive. It connects people, it connects technology, it connects information. The window to the future, it's something that is here, is necessary. We need somebody that can touch on some 3D and can do some video and possibly make a website for us take the data and to make sense of it and to use it to kind of improve my life and people's lives. It's a way to connect people with ideas and technology. All right. So I'm actually going to start with our informatics Bachelor of Science. Um, so <clears throat> many of our students, if you ask them what informatics is, they're going to tell you something different because we cater your degree around what you are passionate about. So where do you want to make an impact on people with technology? Um, so the biggest thing is we, we work with the user side. Um, so I always talk about the different areas. So you have engineering, 
right? And those are the people that are designing the hardware and the software and building better computers. You have your computer scientists who are using heavy theory and math to build algorithms and program systems. So the very, very um, hardcore um, coding on the back end. And then you have your IT people or your CIT professionals, computer information technology that are dealing with the installing and the maintaining and improving of computer systems and networks and databases. They're the people that you see working in businesses on your computer, helping you get through troubleshoot things that go wrong. They also deal with a lot of the um, cybersecurity <clears throat> that's happening right now with data specifically. And then you have informatics professionals or user design, user experience professionals. And these are the people who are working on the application side of the computer, the system, the database. So how does this technology work in real world situations? So in informatics, we say we are like the architects in the building industry. We're the ones that are making sure if you, you have an architect, they're making sure the lighting is correct and the hallways are wide enough for people with disabilities and that we're following all of the regulations. So informatics is the same thing, but with technology, with websites and apps and wearable devices, um, because we need to make sure that the technology that's being developed fits the needs of the person using it. So that's what informatics is all about. I always say if you're a student who likes business and you like technology and computer science intrigues you and you like solving problems, this could be a really great major for you. Um, so I'm actually going to <clears throat> play a video and I'm gonna walk you through each part of the video and let you know what's happening. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about the different areas that you can specialize in within this major. <clears throat> So the first thing that you're going to see in this video is one of our students who did an internship with a food delivery company in downtown Indianapolis. Now his focus is actually data, which so I'm going to show you the full video here in the next slide, but he worked on their um, mobile app. So we have a lot of students who want to focus on mobile app design and experience, user experience. So um, he helped better their application for the user. What you're seeing here is user experience. Um, now we worked closely with the blind and visually impaired here in Indianapolis. And what we did is we developed a screenless typing. So an auditory keyboard in their ear, they will hear the letters. And then with a, just a gesture of their hands, they can type when they hear the letter. Um, and they do hear things very quickly. So it is a quick process for them. So say they're crossing the street and they need to put something in Google Maps. They do not even need to pull their phone out. They're doing it with just one gesture. And that's what Informax is about. Sitting down with the user and finding out their needs and how, how important and impactful that is. Um, this student is focusing on a wearable device or device design. Um, so whether that's going to be your watch or your smart refrigerator, um, what we call that is Internet of Things. So whenever devices talk to each other. Um, so I'm wearing an Apple Watch that talks to my Mac computer, that talks to my iPhone, that talks to my headphones. She's wearing a watch that unlocks her door when she is approaching it when she walks in her um, thermostat goes to a certain degree because she's home and then she walks up to her refrigerator and she can see her calendar and she can write notes down so it's just making everyone's life easier right um with technology so we've had you know ge appliances come and talk to our students about their smart appliances and how you know, every year it gets better. They've like added Keurigs to the fridge and water goes directly to it. You never have to fill it again. So um, all of the crazy cool things that we can do with technology. So within this degree, you can say, hey, I'm really interested in law and legal. I want to be focused on technology in the legal field. So if you think about all of the um, electronic evidence, um, if you think about what kinds of animations and things that they use in the courtroom, you can make sure that that's better for the people using it. Um, or you could focus in um, humanities or business and be a business analyst. So not necessarily the person doing all of the code, but you're the person that's in, in between the computer scientists and the marketing team because you understand both sides. So you see uh, Kendall down there in the corner. Um, One America hired her on as a business analyst when she graduated. Um, she was an ambassador for us. So a lot of opportunities. We have a ton of research that we do. Um, so the auditory keyboard that I talked about, that is actually um, a million dollar research project that we were given money from a company to work on and our students get that real world experience as they're in school. Another really cool app that we're working on is with Riley Children's Hospital. 
Um, so in the Pediatric Cancer Center, um, we've identified that parents that have children with cancer, one parent will be at the hospital for you know, weeks, the other parent could be hundreds of miles away at home with the other children um, that aren't sick. And they are communicating via text, which is, as you know, hard to look back and find things that you need, like medicine need, that needs to be taken and things like that. Um, <clears throat> or they're using notebooks. So what we've been doing in phase one is interviewing the parents and finding out exactly what do they need out of a communication system to help them fulfill their needs as one parent is at the hospital and one parent is at home. Um, and so we've, we've learned a lot from what they've told us just about parents feeling guilt and different ways that we can help even with mental health by building this, this um, mobile app. You can see there a lot of different companies and a lot of different um, jobs that our students are, are securing when they graduate. One big company we work closely with is Emphasis, which is out of India. Um, they have a very big hub here in Indianapolis um, at 16 Tech in downtown. We also have a lot of students working with Salesforce, um, a ton of opportunities in the city and beyond. <clears throat> Moving on. This is a new degree, Applied Data and Information Science. This is typically a graduate degree, um, but we, in talking with all the companies who we network with, they said, you know, we need students coming out of college to understand data, how to look at it, how to analyze it, how to um, build visualizations with it. Any technology that you use, anything that you click on, they are using that data to make decisions, right? We saw that in the Netflix social dilemma. If you've seen that, that talks a lot about data. So, Data scientists and data analysts right now, we, they can't fill the positions. Um, so within this degree, you can focus in two different areas. So you'll see that all of our School of Informatics and Computing degrees have specializations. Um, one is the applied data science. That is going to be very heavy math and statistics. You're really focusing on complex data sets, big data. How do we visualize it? And then identifying how do we make real world decisions with this data? The other is applied information science. This is going to be less math. This is more focused on the data life cycle. So understanding how do we find it. So if we're at a company and we're trying to figure out how many customers use the promo code at what time of, of the day on what product so that we know when to market to them, um, where do we find that data? And then where do we where do we keep it so that it's safe and secure, right? So the whole cycle of it before you pass it on to the data scientists. Um, I'm going to show you a video of that student that I talked about that did an internship at Cluster Shock, and he talks a little bit about what he did while he was there. I am interning at Cluster Truck as a data science intern. I work with uh, customer data, I work with the kitchen data, location data, food order item data, like cook time data. And the cool thing about data analysis is there's a lot of data exploration. So it'll just be like a basic question like, which customers do the most of X. And I'll look into that, and usually throughout that we'll find a pattern. It's the fastest paced job I've had. In the first week, I did an analysis on the promotion codes, and on my sixth day there, I presented to the entire marketing team, which is about half of the company. I know I wanted to work at a place that would bring change, in a good way. And Cluster Truck, you know, they're a startup company. They're trying to change how food is delivered, how people get food, how fresh it is, how fast they get it. I want to work in that fast paced field. And the great thing about data science is that it's a quickly changing field. I've been able to use like different languages like R, Python, and SQL to solve all of our problems. And just really being able to show and prove that I learned this and I actually did it in a real life business where they actually used my findings and my work to this day. And I think at Cluster Truck, I've been able to do that. That's the great thing about an internship in downtown Indianapolis is that you don't have to wait until the summer. Our students are doing internships while they're in school because they're right there in the city. So a lot of times they do internships from sophomore to senior year. And then by the time they graduate, they already have a job offer. You can see here, this is our graduate percentages because we don't have undergraduates yet who have graduated. But for our grad program, 94% of these students are employed at graduation with a median salary of 77,500. So it's very, very high at big companies, again, like Emphasis, Salesforce, and Eli Lilly with medical data. <clears throat> Moving on to our two health programs. So biomedical informatics, this is one of 
four um, or five in the nation and the first in the Midwest as an undergraduate degree. So typically, again, this would be a graduate degree. Um, but because we had so many people coming to us saying, hey, we need scientists out of school, we need students that understand research with biomedical um, background in informatics and technology. So we developed this degree. It has been, we've been enrolling students in this degree for the last three years. <clears throat> Again, there are certain specializations within biomedical informatics. Um, this degree is going to be a mix of biology, data, and technology. So within pre-medical, you will be prepared to go to medical school. So you'll take the classes that you need to apply for medical school with a specialization in the bioinformatics as well. Um, focusing in bioinformatics, this is going to combine elements of computer science, medicine, math, and biology. <clears throat> so a great example is building an algorithm for researchers who are researching two very different things, one genes and one molecular. And they talk to each other using this algorithm, making the research process much quicker than if those researchers had to come together and put all of their data together at one time instead of using that algorithm that does it for them. So you're mixing biology with computer science. Um, if you want to focus on personalized medicine, um, repurposing drugs, creating new drugs, or treating rare diseases, this could be a degree for you. Genetics is also included in, in here. Health informatics is gonna be more focused on improving healthcare for a certain population, a community or a group. So this is more of a public health, management of electronic health records. Um, so not so heavy on the computer science and math, but more focused on the data. <clears throat> so I'm gonna play a video for you of our student, Hope Willis, who um, is in this degree, and she talks a little bit about her research. My name is, My name is Hope Phyllis. I'm majoring in biomedical informatics with a specialization in bioinformatics, and I'm from Evansville, Indiana. I visited IUPUI multiple times, and every time I came, I heard about the School of Informatics and Computing, and it always piqued my interest. So after one of the visits, I went home and did some research on SOIC, and I found the biomedical informatics program, and I did more research into that, and it seemed really, really interesting. So I contacted Angela and she told me information about this program and everybody that I talked to was so excited about this program um, because it was new my freshman year. My favorite classes so far have probably been I-201 and I-210, which are the Python coding classes. Coming into college, I had no coding background, so Python was the first thing that I've ever learned. Um, these classes, they know that you might not have had any coding background, so they're really helpful and the professors, the faculty, whoever's teaching the class, um, they want to help you learn and they break it down into smaller steps so you can really um, fundamentally know what you're learning. Something that I am involved in right now is undergraduate student research and I am working with Dr. Wu. I first met her at the Admitted Student Open House and I kept in contact with her throughout my freshman year and I told her my interests in undergraduate research. Uh, she asked me if I would like to come work on a project with her and I of course said yes. I was super nervous though because I had no knowledge in really any of this, what I'm doing now, um, research for one, bioinformatics as another one. So I was super nervous. Um, but then I just had to step back and think like, I'm coming to college to learn about these areas mm -hmm. and these people that I'm working with don't expect me to know everything um, because I am a student and I'm still learning. Um, so I took that and I went into this research and what I'm doing is I'm looking at eligibility criteria of clinical trials. I'm analyzing that data, um, breaking it apart, and we are looking to create a scoring system for patients um, so they can quickly go through the scoring system along with eligibility criteria to see if they are eligible or not for the clinical trial. The biomedical informatics program has really helped set me up for research, which is what I hope to do in the future. 
Um, one of the main things I've learned a lot about is data, which is really important. Um, I've learned how it works, how you use it, and how it interacts with other pieces of data. Um, I've also learned some programming skills, which is useful in data because it helps you organize it in any way that you want to organize it. And you can pick certain pieces of data that you're looking for and it kind of throws out the rest and it really allows you to get in there and look at what is the big picture as well as what are the smaller subsections. Okay, so that is Hope. She's one of our student ambassadors. So if you ever come to one of our events after this COVID mess, hopefully you'll get to meet her. Um, here's some graduate, again, graduate degree <clears throat> statistics because we do not have undergraduates that have graduated yet. You can see here our graduate degree students were employed 100% of them because there are so many jobs, especially if you think about with COVID and what's going on with vaccine, the vaccine and things like that. They need researchers that understand um, biology, but also doing things quickly, which is going to mean that we need to be building algorithms and we need to be using technology so that we can quickly come up with answers to these problems. That's, that's what biomedical informatics is all about. All right, two more to talk about, um, but this is our last health program. So health information management, this program is for students who want to work in a health setting, but do not want to touch people, do not want to deal with blood, but they want to be in that health field. Um, so this is one of 61 accredited programs through the American Health Information Management Association. So just like a registered nurse takes, gets their RN, our professionals get their registered health information administrator. There's only about 15,000 of these experts in the world. Um, so it's a very unique degree. Uh, you're focusing on population data. So collecting, analyzing, interpreting, and using health information to support decision making for preparedness, response, and rehabilitation, and knowing how to help partners, so hospitals, um, establish a health information system. So each of us have an electronic health record, but there's a lot of different electronic health systems, and how do we help them all speak and give the right information that's needed? So it can really help in a crisis like COVID when we don't even have a medical code that's developed for COVID. So that code needs to be developed and not only that, but every single symptom that's in side effect of the drug and things that are happening with COVID, it needs to be developed. And these are the professionals that are doing that. So they're working through that workflow process in, in healthcare organizations. Um, and they're vital to the daily operations. So it's really a, a mix of health, business, and technology. And you can see here, these students, about 82,000, all of our employment rates are above 80,000. So that shows you, if you're going into tech in really any area, um, the employment percentages are very high. <clears throat> and you can see everything from data to medical coding um, to quality. Um, even the insurance companies are hiring students, students to be patient advocates. If something goes wrong during a surgery, they understand the laws behind healthcare as well. So you'll take those classes too. All right, moving on to our last and most popular degree, um, our media arts and science degree. So this is really focused on creating an experience for the user from start to finish based on a specialization. So it is a creative technology degree and then you get to focus in one area. So you know, about 70% of your degree is going to be focused in this specialization that you see there on the left. So we have five of them plus a full stack developer. So what I'm going to show you is a video first that is going to cover um, a bunch of different areas within media arts and science. And then I'm going to break down the specializations for you.
a lot there. You saw a lot of really cool technology. You saw virtual reality and a hot air balloon ride. You saw 3D modeling of a cervix and then 3D printing that to use um, to talk about cervical cancer. You saw a mobile app being developed um, for the Indiana Health Department that is focused on the opioid crisis. You saw an environment that's totally 3D modeled using ZBrush and Maya and texture and color. All of that technology from the Cintiq computers that you draw on with a stylus that Pixar uses to the virtual reality theater to the huge touchscreen tile wall of computers is all in our building in downtown Indianapolis. And at the end here, I'm going to show you where you can find that so that you can take a tour. Um, really quickly, though, I'm going to go through some of these specialization. So 3D graphics is going to focus on the characters and the environments that you see in movies on games, right, um, in virtual reality world. So modeling, texturing, animating, and rigging, lighting, visual effects, motion graphics. Our students who are in this specialization work in areas like simulations, visualizations, gaming, marketing, VR, um, 3D modeling, and 3D printing. We even had a student who won a Golden Globe for working on Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So actually he was an alum. And we have a student who's working at Pixar and speaking to our students this Friday night. Um, if you move on to game, this is our most popular specialization, game design and development. You will use the Unreal Engine to code and Unity. Um, we have coders, we have students who just wanna focus on the storytelling or the artistic creation and that's okay too. We'll work with you to make it yours. Um, in this specialization, you will learn how to design, test, and refine video games from that initial idea all the way to gameplay implementation. So we have um, students who have built games for children dealing with um, proper teeth maintenance to children with diabetes. Um, we've had them make VR um, simulations of, you know, children who have to go in and get a brain scan. So before they go in and get that actual brain scan, they do it in VR. So it helps with that stress and that anxiety on the child. They've already feel like they've been through it once before. So there's a lot of ways that you can help others with gaming other than just entertainment. So children, healthcare, and then training. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Moving on to video production and sound. So you will be working on interviews, dramas, um, documentaries, and then post and pre-production. So everything from casting and finance to budgeting, directing and editing. Um, you'll even work on color correction sound. So that sound design is gonna be like all of those um, sound effects and the music and the voiceover. So you're really learning it all. You'll also focus on digital storytelling, that script writing and that storyboarding. You saw at the end of the video, they were downtown working on a social media video for a company with, um, for a food restaurant. Moving on to web design and development. So anytime that you can code, in, in, in technology, in any field, you will make more money. So for students who are creative and would like to also develop, this is a great major for them. Um, the student down there in the corner, his name is Moosh. He was our, one of our student ambassadors. He worked for um, the Office of Undergraduate um, Degrees and he did all of their web pages, but he was very creative. So he made sure he understood the front end as well as the back end. Um, digital storytelling. So the story is really the heartbeat of every creative endeavor, right? So you're going to learn how to shape ideas into words and really captivate your audience and market your vision. So if you like writing stories and writing about characters and you have a notebook that you keep, this could be a good specialization for you. We also include digital marketing and social media in this major as that is really where everything's going. So can you work for entertainment? Absolutely. Do you want to work in graphic design or for a marketing firm here in downtown Indianapolis? We can also make sure that we cater your degree to that. But last is full stack developers. This is going to be front end, back end development. So everything from your HTML to your CSS and your Java, all the way up to PHP, MySQL, and NoSQL. So you're learning both sides. So you really are the unicorn of the industry. We do a lot of research as well in this creative field. So we have students working with a naval base, creating 3D models of anything that you would see in a in a airspace so planes ships um, birds missiles and the goal is on the other end they're creating ai networks that can recognize in airspace these 3d um, models so then in the real world this ai knows how to recognize certain things via cameras and we don't need actual people sitting there watching the airspace all the time right I'm moving everything to robots um, We've done a lot in VR with 
the military with firefighters, um, training them on um, in full gear in VR, and it's a simulation with industry heat and different scents um, to help them figure out where's the, where did the fire start, what is the scent, how did it start, where do we go from here, um, and they do that all in VR. I even just talked to a mechanic the other day that said that they're doing a lot of training and an electrician in VR. Um, so there's, there's, they need people to develop the environments, to develop the story, to develop the models within those systems. You can see here our students are working at big companies. Raytheon is actually a military company. Um, we have students that just got, we have a student that just got a job at Rockstar, which is a big um, gaming company in LA. We have students that work for, like I said, Pixar, PlayStation. We even have a student working for John Green, who's a big YouTube guy in film and video. Um, even one of my ambassadors is doing an internship with IU Studios. So when you see videos on IUPUI's website, most likely Stephen Durham was the one working on those. And then we do do an internship in Hollywood. So these students go to Hollywood for the summer. We help them secure an internship in the area that they specialize in. Um, and they get to really see the real world. And what is it like out West? Because a lot of our students, that's really their goal is to be out West. Um, let's see if I had time. Doesn't look like it. I'm going to move on, um, but I want to show you our YouTube channel. So actually, we're going to, we're just going to go to YouTube real quick. Um, so we have our virtual tour on here, as well as a ton of opportunities for you to hear. There's Stephen right there. To hear from our ambassadors. Um, we also have virtual sessions that are focused on different areas of specialization within our majors. They're an hour long. And then we have some really cool stories. So you saw Kyle right here, but this is a virtual reality. Um, basically an experience for, for people who are intensive care. So although, you know, they are definitely improving physically, their mental health, as we all found out with COVID, just being stuck in a room, their mental health is not improving. It's actually diminishing. So she created a virtual reality um, trip for them outside by the beach and through waterfalls and through flower fields so that they can at least just see something other than the room that they're in and feel very like they're immersed in that situation. So that was actually implemented in a hospital here in Indianapolis. Um, and then there's a bunch of student reels. So if you're into 3D or if you're into your um, video and audio, storytelling, game or web design, you can actually see current student work, work that has been developed within the last year or so. And then last, we have a bunch of alumni opportunities for you to see as well. Um, <clears throat> so let's go back to the presentation. And I'm just going to talk really quick about um, some additional resources for you through the School of Informatics and Computing in the last 10 minutes that I have here. So we do have accelerated bachelor or master programs. What that means is that you can leave our school with an undergraduate and graduate degree in five years. So typically, right, undergrad could take four to five years and graduate could take two to three. We're actually filtering in graduate classes your senior year with us in your electives. You graduate and come back for one additional year for your graduate degree. We've seen students that have made 30,000 more just in staying for that one additional year because they have their graduate degree. So just know that that's an option for you. Um, so being accepted to IEPY SOIC, which is our acronym, you'll hear me say that a lot. Um, so you can see here IUPUI admissions, just the average getting in SAT, ACT, GPA student coming in. We are test optional this year, so you do have a choice if you would like to submit your SAT or ACT. For direct admins to the School of Informatics, you can see for the informatics and the data and the media arts programs, 3.0 is direct admins to our school for 2021. Um, this could definitely change if you're a junior, um, so keep the eye out next year for our requirements. For the health program and the biomedical program, a 3.2 GPA is direct admittance. Um, and just like IUPUI will tell you, we are on apply.iu.edu where you can apply to any IU for one fee of $65. We're also on the Common App. And then in that corner, you can see if you do decide to apply for informatics or media arts, you do want to look under C's for computing. That is where we're located on both applications. All right, lots of scholarships for seniors. So not only does IUPUI give you money based on your grades, 
Um, but we stack scholarships on top of that as an academic unit on IUPUI's campus. So our incoming freshman scholarship is for those students admitted to our school and have a 3.2 GPA. They will automatically in state students receive $1,000 per year out of state $2,500 per year. We also have a very impressive inclusive informatics scholarship. This is for underrepresented students, females, um, letter of recommendation and an essay is required and you could get up to $3,500 per year for four years based on need. We also have a pretty amazing honors college. You can check that out online as well. All right, additional research or resources. So I talked about research. Um, we also have a study abroad program in Greece, although IUPUI has hundreds of, of options for you. This is a really great one through our school. We have some really, really fun student groups from Gamers Guild that does video gaming for two days straight to our web design group to our biomedical group. And then last, we do have a full floor of informatics students in North Hall. We have four housing facilities on campus, North Hall being the newest. So you would live on a floor with like-minded students who usually enjoy the same things as you outside of class. And then upcoming events, this is the most important thing. So if you do fill out information through StriveScan and I get that information from you, um, we will start inviting you to things. Our next event is our open house or JAG day and that is gonna be on November 12th. That allows you to talk to faculty, students, um, and even an advisor to learn about credit transfer. We do have some virtual workshops for high school students that are free all the way through March. Everything from biomedical to data to game design to live streaming with YouTube. So you can check that out. And then we do do one-on-one -on -one appointments with parents and students, students and their families, to talk about the degrees and help them really just be prepared to get into school. So you can see here some resources, which actually I already talked about. So I'm just gonna pull up our page really quick with this last minute or so and show you our webpage. So this is our webpage. If you go here to undergraduate, we have a, a page for admitted students. Once you're admitted, we'll get you the link to that. But if you go to visit us, you're going to be able to check out our tour, our virtual tour. So this is a five minute video that is going to show you all of our really cool stuff that we have to the offer. IQ wall. So even like we the are in the 3D lab and Marlar in our um, app lounge. So very cool. And then on top of that, you can go into our specialty labs, our green screen room, our media arts room, and you can even go in. It's Matterport style. So you can go into the room and you can see this is student artwork. And then you can go over here and see like what technology are they using? Pretty cool, right? Blender, which is for 3D modeling and rigging. So definitely check this out. I'm gonna go back to visit us. And here's the JAG day options that I was talking about those open houses. Here's the one-on-one -on -one visit. And then if you scroll all the way down, we have our free hands-on STEM workshops. Um, so, It'll take you to a different page. It's not taking me there, that's okay. But you can see these are the different ones that we, that we offer. And at this time, I think that is all that we have, all the time that we have left, about five minutes. So that is my presentation. Thank you all so much for um, hanging out with me today. And there's my information there on the bottom. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to, re to email me or our recruiter, Taylor, Taylor Dooley. Thank you for joining us today. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any, serve, any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to, to uh, look out uh, at the end of this week for additional sessions that are on demand at inacac.org. You can also access this recording in about a week or so. Thank you and have a great night.